Hello, vinyl community, and welcome to Vinyl Talk with Tavis. Today's video is going to be all about Whitney Houston. That's right. For the past few months, I've been buying all kinds of Whitney Houston records that I didn't even know existed. That means a lot of remixes and things like that. But of course, I had to go ahead and get her, um, her prevalent projects. But I'm going to show you what I have. And before I do that, you know, there's some news about Whitney Houston having a, well, first of all, when she passed away in 2012, I'm sure just like you, I was so shocked. I remember where I was. I was I was on my computer and I was cooking some food and I didn't have my TV on and I was browsing through Facebook. And just like when Michael Jackson passed, the same person posted something and said, he said, I think he said, OMG, Whitney Houston. And he had all these exclamation marks. And I was like, oh no, what's going on? So I immediately turned on CNN. I didn't look online and, and type in Whitney Houston. I just went on CNN. And there, there was the news. And it was, it was just as shocking as Michael Jackson's passing away. And uh, her memorial service was just awesome. That's all I can say. And, but again, like I said about other artists who are either no longer with us or who are ill and can't perform, she left such a musical legacy so many things, just like that introduction. That was the second song that I had heard from Whitney Houston, How Will I Know? And um, those chords and that beat and her voice, there's a boy! I mean, we were like, who is that? Who is that? And back then, you know, there was no, again, I say there was no internet. There's just, just the radio. And we were just getting into videos and my dad had gotten this satellite and we were watching black entertainment television and MTV and Friday night videos. Y'all remember Friday night videos? And they would play that and that video introduction and she's walking and you can't see her face and you hear that beat and she has that tight, tight dress and that crazy wig. <laughs> Boy, she was something else, I tell you. I think... I think I heard in some interview that that was probably her most embarrassing video she ever did. But man, it was allegedly. I think I heard her say that in a video interview. But um, I digress. But it's all about Whitney Houston, so I didn't digress. Let's start with her first album, just entitled Whitney Houston. Uh, the first song that I heard from her was um, uh, You Give Good Love. I remember that video when she's standing at that microphone and, and she starts singing. And I think I first saw it on black entertainment television. And it was just, it was a love affair at first sight. We just, 1985. Hmm. I graduated in 1990 in high school. So this was like middle school, man. But I, I had a an aunt who just always played her stuff and always loved her. And the song, How Will I Know, um, this is one of those finds that I was really excited to get. It, this, this just not scream the 80s. This screams 80s. Look at those colors and the way she's dressed. That's just how we did it back then in the 80s, y'all. The girls just 
wow, I, I think this is probably my favorite picture of her from the 80s. Wow. A really cool, cool cover. I wish I had this poster. But this is just the How Will I Know remixes. And my aunt had this back in the day. May she rest in peace. She had this album. And I would sneak in her room. And I wouldn't listen to the song because she would know that I was back in her bedroom. But I would just gaze at this album cover. And it just, I was like, it was just captivating. And it still is. And you know, Whitney Houston was a model before she was a singer. And of course, she, um, before she was a solo artist, she did lots of background vocals with her mother, Sissy Houston, like for... Um, I'm, I'm really sure she did it with Shaka Khan back in the day. And so Whitney Houston, she, she knew what to do. Singing in church, singing background vocals with famous artists along with her mother and her, I think it's her cousin, Dionne Warwick. I mean, she was doing her thing even before she was doing her thing. I mean, she was on it. So I'm, I'm glad to have this. This, this sounds really good, y'all. All the different remixes. Just a very cool album. And then she comes out with this. It's just Whitney. Just an awesome, awesome album to own. I have the CD as well, but I listen to this more than the CD. And I Want to Dance with Somebody. I think it's on Spotify, in which it's the highest, it's her most popular song. But I, I just love that. I love that. Oh, those synthesizers back in the 80s were so mm, just good to the ear. But um, remember when she did I Want to Dance with Somebody on the show Dancing with the Stars? And and she walked down those steps and the, the key was not the original key and she, her voice was really low and it just wasn't the same. But at least we, we know how she used to sound. And so, uh, what else is on here? We all know this. Um, Love Will Save the Day. Didn't we almost have it all? Woo! And so emotional, y'all. So emotional. I get emotional talking about it. I remember when I was listening to the radio. And I was in the car, I think I was with my dad and mom, and we were listening to the radio, and So Emotional came on. And I remember, I mean, those vocals are rough. I get so emotional, baby, every time I think of you. And her, um, her harmony, which is above that. I get so emotional, baby. I remember after that song was over, even the DJs, it's almost to me as if they'd never heard the song before. They were like, okay, <laughs> what can follow this? Uh, now we're gonna have Barry Manilow. <laughs> me me and my, I think, I think my sister was with me. I can't remember who was with me, but I know that after I heard the DJs say like what can follow that ladies and gentlemen now we're gonna have barry manilow or something so, somebody who was not even in the same category as whitney and that song they could not there was nothing that you could follow with that song just great music on this and speaking of this that, that album um i found this love will save the day uh, the extended remix, and there's an acapella version on here, and then there's a single version on here, and there's a dub, Love Will Save the Day. I was glad to find this. I just looked on eBay and started finding Whitney Houston albums, and also in my local record stores here in town. Just started having a Whitney Houston fit, just buying everything I could by her. Um, this is really cool. Um... You see that? 
Let's go ahead and take it out. This is the the unreleased remixes from I'm Every Woman from her um, the soundtrack from um, The Bodyguard. Yeah. How did I forget that? I thought that's I thought that was really cool. And uh, here is the other side. I'm Every Woman Greatest love of all, just um, just great remixes of the songs. Really cool, really happy about that. Do y'all like Whitney Houston? I mean, she's to me, she's um, my my second famous female vocalist, my second favorite female vocalist. And her um, her album from The Preacher's Wife, man, I wish that was on uh, vinyl. I wish that was on vinyl. But on that soundtrack is Step by Step. I think it was written by Annie Lennox. I'm taking it step by step, bit by bit, mile by mile. Just great lyrics. It's a very uplifting, um, inspirational song. I love it. And this includes the different remixes. There is, um, there's four albums in here. No, I'm sorry, there are two. Two albums. But um, you see that? Great, 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 great music. From The Preacher's Wife. I wish that was on vinyl. It may be, and I just haven't found it. You know, if this is on vinyl, I mean, why can't the Preacher's Wife soundtrack be on vinyl? Maybe you all can let me know. And here's something I found. I was really excited to find this. This is um, a two album set as well. From the Bodyguard, I'm Every Woman. Isn't that a beautiful cover? I mean, that's a sexy cover. Whitney Houston was a beautiful woman. And there's an inside. Look at this. I just think that's awesome. See, just beautiful. And the albums are just in perfect condition. Just great. Let me show you what they look like. I'm just taking my time today, y'all. I'm in a laid back mood. I'm going to be going outside and enjoying the rest of the beautiful sunshine. Yeah, on Arista Records, I'm Every Woman, the different kinds of remixes. Really, really cool. Then she came out with that album that included It's Not Right, But It's Okay, and Heartbreak Hotel. And I had to, ooh, man, I had to get this one. Ooh-wee. That was a jam of a record, too. And this whole thing is, I think this, yeah, this has three albums in it. Three albums. And it has Heartbreak Hotel. It's Not Right, It's Okay. And I think there's a, a certain version called the Thunder the Thunder Puss 2000 dub. I love that version of It's Not Right, It's Okay. That's my favorite remix of that. But that cover, that's just, I think that's, I'm gonna use that as a thumbnail. Let me see. Yeah, Lord. Woo, good music. Um, the recent record that I bought from Whitney Houston was her, I don't think it's her latest, but, and maybe it is, but it's called I Wish You Love More From The Bodyguard. I got this from Amazon, and it's a, um, a two record set, and it just has different versions and alternate takes of all the songs of The Bodyguard soundtrack, which features her, Whitney. 
So it has live versions. It has some um, alternate versions of I Will Always Love You. Um, the, the actual film versions of Queen of the Night. Highly recommend this if you are a Whitney Houston lover. It's on Amazon. And what makes it really cool, um, there's some wonderful, wonderful pictures in here and information. And there's also, you know, some more great pictures from the bodyguard. Um, when the bo oh, isn't that wonderful? When the bodyguard came out, I was just entering the university, and I remember I was I was in my dorm room, and um, we had a it was an all boy dorm room. And um, we had this middle portion of the dorm where we could go in and watch TV and do our homework and sit on couches. And I heard, And I, I will always love you. And I never heard it. I've, I've heard Dolly Parton do it, but I've never I had never heard Whitney do it. And so I walked out of my dorm room and went right to that room with the TV. And I looked up and there was the video. And I was like, Whitney? And chill bumps were all over my body. And I was just mesmerized by that video. And that song, that that song helped me my, with my first few first few years of college went going to a university because she she rolled on that success of that album and that movie for a good couple of years but um see just great 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 photos and what i like about this album here is that it's colored vinyl so it's pink that's really really cool see I was happy to get this record. Yes, I was. Okay, next I'm going to show you some um, 45s. I was excited to get 45s. These all came from eBay and local stores. Um, I got the So Emotional 45. Yeah. That song where the DJs didn't know what to do after the song was finished. We'll play some Barry Manilow. <laughs> Ooh, that was funny. Here's um, All at Once. All at once. And on the back is Saving All My Love For You. Let's just show it. We got time. You ain't doing nothing. That's why you're watching me. I'm glad you're watching me. Whoever's out there. The vinyl community, music lovers, Whitney Houston lovers, music lovers in general. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. I'd appreciate it. And hit that bell so that you know when I'm bringing out new videos. Here's I Want to Dance with Somebody, the 45. You know, it's all on Arista. Arista. You know that she's, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but um, doing some type of concert tour. Her, somebody in the family is doing a concert tour using a hologram of Whitney Houston and putting out a new album. Now, I'm not so peeved about the new album because I'm sure that she has a lot of unreleased material but the fact that they're going to do this tour, if it's still in the works, doing a tour of Whitney Houston using a hologram. I know it's been done before with Michael Jackson and some other artists, but I, I, I'm not supporting that. Mm -mm. I think that's a bunch of baloney. I think that's crap. 
someone's trying to make money off of I think when I heard that I was like who in the world is broke who is trying to make money why don't they leave that leave Whitney Houston alone Maybe some, maybe some of y'all don't mind seeing it, but I don't want to be seeing no hologram of Whitney Houston singing these new songs and 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 making it look all real and as fake as oh that 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 really got me angry. I was not happy with that, and I'm not going to support it. I'll just watch the Bodyguard and the Preacher's Wife and Waiting to Exhale. I wish wait. I think Waiting to Excel is on a vinyl, but it's high as the heavens. Woo! I'm, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it, y'all. Here is, I want to dance with somebody. And I mentioned earlier that um, the 45 sounds so much better than the 33s because the, the grooves are, are bigger and and this is... What's that moment in time? Moment of truth. I've never heard that. I've not listened to that side. I just listened to I want to dance with somebody. Here is Whitney Houston's One Moment in Time. Give me one moment in time. Yes. Great, great music. Great, 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 great. Here is, I play this all the time, usually every year for my students. This is the greatest love of all. When they're doing their, when I give them music assignments that require writing, sometimes I'll play this. And you know, it just kind of, it's kind of, it's inspiring. It's not kind of, it is inspiring. Great music there. And then here is the How Will I Know 45 from her debut album. Again, that picture to me is just an iconic 80s photo. There's the back and it has someone for me on side two. And my last 45, oh, if I could get this, um, I want to get this 33 of her album I'm Your Baby Tonight but I found the 45 and got that I'm your baby tonight this is when she you know her her first album and her second album was was very popish I think they were trying to establish an, a pop image you know and then when she came out with I'm Your Baby Tonight where she's on the motorcycle right there um it was more R&B focused, you know, and and we all enjoyed it, but we, we could tell that there was a difference. And then we noticed as her albums, as she kept making more albums, we noticed that her voice was changing. You know, it was more raspy, but we didn't care because as long as she was still singing and popping and doing her thing, we loved it. And by the time she did her, um, that last movie that she did, and she did His Eyes on the Sparrow. And um, we, we said, man, her voice is not the same. Her voice, just something's wrong. It's just not right. I have here, if I could find it here, where did I place it? I am wishing, I am wishing, I'm really wishing that they would, some company or somebody from Arista would, make an album of this on vinyl. This, her, her Christmas album is, is very, very good. I mean, I've heard mixed reviews, but I think it's a great listen. I mean, this is one of the first albums I start playing around October, November. <laughs> I play my Christmas music starting in late October after Halloween. So like on October the 31st or November the 1st, something like that. Even before Halloween. I just like Christmas music. So I play this and I play the Charlie Brown Christmas and all that. But this is one of my Christmas music staples that I play. And it has the first Noel. 
Um, it even goes back and gets music from The Preacher's Wife, which is, I'm um, joy to the world, the Lord has come. And oh, it has O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Ooh, it's, I, and it's, it has this a cappella feel. I think, I don't know if it's a keyboard or actual voices, but I think one of the guys from Take Six, Mervyn Warren, I think he, um, I think he does the background or something with that. It's really, really cool. This is a great, great album for Whitney. I wish it was on vinyl. Well, everybody, it was fun sharing with you my Whitney Houston vinyl collection and CD, one CD of hers. But um, I just wanted to let you all know uh, the music that I had by Whitney. I miss her dearly. I wonder what she would have accomplished if she were to have been alive even today. But um, I hope all of you are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. I have some crazy things coming up. So um, my house is a mess. I've got to clean it. But first, I'm going to be going outside and enjoying the rest of this sunshine. You all take care. And remember, as always, as always. With music, be inspired, and stay inspired.